All right, guys, welcome to episode three of the Sketchy Square podcast. Uh, episode two I found and then subsequently lost probably permanently. So, woo, everyone. Yay, we did it. We did it. Um, as you guys probably don't know because you're not listening or whatever, I am Sora, the, uh, what would you call me, the headmaster, the ring ring leader. That's it. That That sounds pretty good. Sure. Why and not? <laughs> uh, yeah, with me is my uh, faithful co-host and brother. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Wait, did we ever have a name for me, or do I just give my normal name? I have no idea. <laughs> I, you know, I probably your normal name, but okay, it's up to you, man. <laughs> I like. I'm afraid people are gonna find this random person online. That's <laughs> fine. You know how many people go by their real name online and don't get raped? Like, you know maybe like at one least out of ten dozen. at least yeah, dozens yeah a baker's doesn't even wow a baker's doesn't yeah no <laughs> i'm i'm eddie i'm def- i'm sora's older brother so yay also his yeah. uh his greatest inspiration uh uh yeah, yeah okay one one of many inspirations i'll give you that much but i'm still number one in your heart uh sure whatever makes you feel better theme song How'd you like that? I felt like I was in a Prince of Persia level. No, that's I'll take it. I'm I'm not hurt by that one bit. Like one of the pretty good ones, not like the really bad Prince of Persia game, or like you know, pretty good one. Yeah, yeah, I did use kind of that um that kind of key. I can't remember which one it is now, but it was it was along those lines of the exotic ones. They're cool. I like them. I like exotic scales. They're fun. Yes. But yeah, so I, I, I aim to have multiple songs throughout the lifespan of the podcast, so uh, look forward to new ones as they come. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, topics are you going to drag us into now? <laughs> All right. I do have a little bit of a list ready. Um, it's weird for me to be prepared for things, so enjoy that. Uh, I'm scared already. I guess I'll go ahead and start with... Uh, video games because you know out of all the media things that's probably one of the biggest ones that we well the two of us can confer on and you know jeremy would too if he was here that little bitch um so (laughs) actually today i um i recorded about an hour of me playing system shock 2 system shock 2 now now, this is this is really old game now at this point isn't it yeah, I mean, it was uh 99, I believe. If I remember correctly or 2000, something like that. But yeah, it's it's relatively old. Um however, it definitely doesn't show its age nearly as bad as System Shock 1, which I played mm-hmm. before that and oof, that's a rough game. Ugh. Like <laughs> um when you had to pick things up, you had to like double click them and then click into your inventory to drop them into your inventory. And you're like, all right, that I guess I could get used to, but like they give you a lot of stuff at the beginning, so it got mm-hmm. to be very obtrusive. So it was just this tedious click, 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 click. Yep. Going. And that, and every time you would click something, double click stuff, and you wanted to go back to looking around, you had to hit the E button to have like uh like camera control again. So. Oh. Yeah, really disorienting. So I played that for maybe about ten minutes, and then decided, hey, I'll play. I'll play two. Two will be great. Um, apparently, I'm a big dummy though, because I went to record, and it recorded fine. And I made sure before I hit record that I turned the mic on. Well, by the end of the hour, it turned out somehow the mic got turned back off. So, uh, yeah. So I uploaded the video to YouTube. It has no voiceover at all but it's it was it was a fun experience um for being an old game and like the really like low level like graphics fucking spooked the shit out of me so many times man (laughs) god it's not even like dark and creepy but like Mm -hmm. 
it just shit would just be there suddenly and i'm like ah you know <laughs> pretty good so it, it's kind of funny it, it, it so this is the same people who did bioshock later right yeah yeah um and it's funny because they actually uh show um irrational games in the opening where the first one just showed looking glass which is the original like studio that ken levine i think his name was ran um mm -hmm. that eventually became a new one and um it definitely you definitely see the um where bioshock comes from in that um a lot of like early bioshock things but it's it's much tougher and much more intricate which i'm kind of enjoying but kind of annoyed by it. not annoyed but it just it gets to be a bit much sometimes i feel like uh but so, fun yeah so it's got like a it's got a fairly high skill level without being yeah yeah okay. yeah def definitely definitely um the psionics are cool um so you can see you can feel like the early version of like the uh the fucking what you call it's from Bioshock, like all the little magic powers and stuff. It's been a minute mm -hmm. since I've played. Um so that's pretty cool, but I was kind of disappointed. Like I, I picked up a gun and I went to use it, but it was like, oh no, you, you don't have that skill yet. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. And so there's a early on in the game, there's like a little station where you go to spend like this like sort of currency but it's not really currency type thing to you know get skills and stuff like that mm -hmm. well i mistakenly decided to use that for hacking apparently mistakenly because um and then even the lady who gives you your first batch of it's just like yeah no this shit's hard to find so haha and you're like all right cool but there's like 50 billion different options in each like of the four like things you can focus on like psionics which is like the powers uh mm -hmm. there's tech which is like hacking and stuff and sure. then and then of course shooting guns weapons in general and then the fourth one is like just general stat boosts basically yeah so like yeah. a flat bat base a lot yeah, of this yeah. yeah a lot of this reminds me of the setting that comes with a uh, tabletop rpg that's called alternity yeah, you've talked to me about that before, and I think I looked over like a character sheet or two, and I, I would say it's pretty similar in some aspects. Yeah, it's got a lot of that similarity. So, you know, it's it's made by the people who had originally made the original Dungeons & Dragons, but it's very much, it's a far future setting, mostly. It also incorporates a lot of psychic powers and and various different powers like that, but it's very, very nuanced in that way. Nice. Skill based. I, so, I like that. I might have to get uh, into that more. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm I'm a big future sci-fi kind of guy, more so than I ever was like the uh the high fantasy or whatever you want to call it, medieval. What, what, Swords and sorcery. Swords yeah, and that sorcery. Whole thing. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy some to an extent. It just sure. it feels very what's the word? Like there's just so much of it now that it's it's hard to really it's oversaturated. That's a that's the perfect word, exactly. Oversaturated. Well, I mean, especially since we both me and you you are exceptionally big fans of the RPG genre in general, yeah. and just oh, God, RPGs yeah. especially love the swords and sorcery. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was like Final Fantasy's bread and butter, so that's a good yeah. example to start. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. for sure. So. Yeah. But speaking of Final Fantasy, I think both of us have gotten the seven remake now. <laughs> of course, you know I had to. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you you've got it literally tattooed on you. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, you know how many times I get asked, "Oh, is that for Organization 13? Yeah, definitely, dude. What? Oh, is that for Final Fantasy 13? Really? Like, do you have any brain cells in there? Okay, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. To be honest, you go by the the the, the eponym Sora, so <laughs> yeah, that's fair. However, Sora is not a member of Organization Thirteen, and nobody has a Thirteen tattooed in the on them on and either of those games. Whereas True. Final Fantasy VII, if you look mm -hmm. at one of the best characters, clearly one has Thirteen. Character. One yeah. of the best characters are just well, the best characters. Uh, it, it's tough. Um, I've come around a lot on Tifa, and I've always had a soft spot for Yuffie as well. But yeah. uh, see, I never, I never really cared much for Yuffie. Um, 
Yeah, that, uh, I gotta say this uh, this remake has definitely been an interesting take on Tifa. She, yeah, she... and it's it's weird because honestly, I think this is more of showing what she was supposed to be, but couldn't quite be conveyed in its limited technology. Um, mm-hmm. It's very like like you can see this with Aerith too. It's almost a juxtaposition with their character design and their personality where like Tifa looks like she'd be more of the rambunctious one, but she's more of the much like, uh, what's the word? Like nicer, calmer, like, like more worrisome type character where Aerith looks like she'd be more of that, like that chiller thing, but she's much more outgoing, strong, bullheaded, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny because Tifa's design and her backstory very much le- lend to that that RPG trope, the plucky childhood friend, you know. Yeah. Always, always with the fists and ready to punch everybody, and just you know, always you know, short shorts and you know, little halter top. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's let's not fool anyone here. It's Final Fantasy that well, we still fall into the same thing where it's like your anime slash Japanese tropes are just that's how they build characters it just feels like maybe final fantasy does it on a little bit different of a level gives it a little more depth than some of the stuff like the tales of series which is literally yeah. like watching an anime so <laughs> well it, it it doesn't hurt that final fantasy has been around so long that it pretty much is the inventor of some of these tropes oh uh, that's so, that's a fair point so you can kind of forgive somebody for going back to the well when it's their well <laughs> that's all right yeah fair enough fair enough so and, but yeah it is it and and that's the thing too is they never really feel like even even in the older games like as they started to kind of have more personality and stuff they never really felt super flat other than maybe maybe a little bit in 10 but okay a little bit in th- 13 as well but <laughs> And you're and you're one of the biggest apolog- apologists, if I if I will say. For oh no, 13 no no no! Anyway. Not apologist, <laughs> defender. Okay, because thirteen <laughs> was a good game. Thirteen two was a great game, and a lot of people, because they were so turned off by thirteen, never gave thirteen two a chance, and it literally fixed everybody's complaint about thirteen. And it's a shame because it really was an awesome game. Granted, they left on a cliffhanger that. I couldn't be bothered to play through the third game long enough to find out what the fuck was going on. They kind of pulled the Kingdom Heartsy thing with the um the the third game. It was like suddenly everything was extremely convoluted and you're like is this even the same universe, world, story? What what is this? I mean, I recognize some of these characters, but uh, what? So it it's kind of a weird design theory that uh it's like adding complexity to make it better, and that's not always true. It's yeah. just complexity for complexity's sake. And I don't exactly. think that's a good idea. And I, I think it probably would have worked better if 13 had been a lot more cohesive. Um, the story, at least having a story on like 15, which if we ever uncover missing podcasts, you'll find out my feelings on that game. But <laughs> um, so it had a story, and the story was the main focus big thing missing from 15 i will say again however it required a lot of like reading in the the data log thing and like you know it it took a lot to understand really what was going on and i think that was one of the major things that held it back really um but it's fun it's a fun game so and we can compare that and contrast it with final fantasy 7 yeah exactly final fantasy 7 actually has a lot of the similar problems that they used to complain about with thir- with with 13 with the linear storytelling especially early on yeah. and being kind of on rails but 7 like makes it almost from moment 1 this is what we're doing this is what the stakes are this is the world we're in you know yeah. the, you and know, i mean it can be said it does open up in some spots, a lot of spots. Sure. It's a lot more free where like 13, it was a straight run. And then you had that big open world that didn't really feel like it needed to be an open world, but it was there. So, mm-hmm. um, and I think honestly, that's, that's the biggest reason that 15 failed. And I think the seven remake is awesome because it, 
knows that it's a story based game and it really like leans into that and kind of gives you that linear path so it can tell you a linear story i mean look at the uncharted games those are linear as fuck games you can't tell me they weren't they are and that's that's how you tell a story and we're very limited like we haven't figured out how to really open world branches story like yes to an extent mass effect kind of pulled it off but <laughs> don't talk about mass effect 3 with that but you know uh, we don't talk about anything past one one was the best honestly <laughs> yeah but i mean i think the best open world storyline is the metal gear solid i think it's four so Ooh. i'm trying to remember played which four. yeah that's the one where he you're basically recruiting people and they all go back to your oil platform. Oh, that's five. You're thinking is that of. five? Sorry, five. <sighs> yes and no. Um, five suffered from being a giant sandbox of Metal Gear fun without. I don't know. A lot of like the missions felt very just like, all right, go here, do this. Okay, but why? Eh, because you want to see the next cutscene. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I don't I know. Mean, that's kind of the best you're gonna get from a really open world game, right? Exactly, and I and that's really why it's hard to like suggest using it open world as a story platform. So open world is more about having good mechanics and having fun within those mechanics and telling your own story. It's, right, exactly. Yeah. We, we we always we always dive back to Skyrim. Skyrim is the ultimate example of the the open world game that just is. It's very true. I mean, they have like a linear like uh, quote unquote linear story that you can follow through, but then they have so many other little side stories and little things here and there that actually fill in the world and make it feel full and real. And that that's that's probably really what needs to be done and it's hard I haven't seen many other things do that. I mean, obviously, Fallout, some of them did that really well. A lot of people say about New Vegas. I found New Vegas to be kind of boring, so I didn't get super far into that one. Mm. But but it, it definitely captured that the, the right balance of story and open world that is hard to find in anything else. Yeah. I mean, but that's the point, is, is you have to kind of know what you're getting into. Now we had yeah. we had discussed another one that was interesting because it leaned heavily into the mechanic side was like just cause, very oh, open worldy game. But you're you're not there for the story because the story all. is pure garbage. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> you're you're not you're not even really there for the character or the god the voice acting or anything along those lines. You're there oh, god, specifically no. for the fact that you can do all kinds of crazy stunts. You can yep. You know, run around and it just the flying suit, just sitting there flying oh, around, yeah. slingshotting yourself with his little with his little sling everywhere. And yeah, it's and just, I mean it's like fun, like hitting little bases and shit, and blowing shit up, and just just mm -hmm. doing crazy fucking shit. Just it's it's such a relaxed, not relaxing, but like it's a great outlet. I guess would be a good way to put it. It's like a Pacific Rim movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good comparison. Very, needs more Charlie Day though. Everything needs more Charlie Day, but and that the truth. Yeah. So, so yeah, we didn't talk too much about seven there, huh? Yeah, got enough yeah. in. I think. But um, <laughs> one more thing I did want to mention though is I'm absolutely in love with the combat in seven. Um, I have never felt like it, at first it was hard for me to get used to dodging. I've never been a big dodge parry guy in games, but with this one, I feel like it's at a good like pace where. I can feel like I'm actually having like an action, do an action, but still can kind of avoid things and have control over what I'm doing on the battlefield. It's a really nice balance. It reminds me a lot of when I first played Kingdom Hearts, and that was the very first action RPG along those lines. Right, right, played. exactly. But so, it's it feels more fun and more smooth in a way than Kingdom Hearts, even three compared to three like it just feels more it almost feels more like a platinum game you know okay I, 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 see i hadn't played any sense two and two was just way over the top but two is great i love two fantastic <laughs> game but it, it, it still is very it's 
very strategic. I found that that game, more than just about any I play in a while, is very either it completely punishes me, or yeah. I walk through the the encounter, and it's the same encounter. I'll be punished the first time. Go, oh, I should have done this first, and immediately yeah. go in the second time and go, okay, bup bup, and then I wipe the encounter without even a scratch. Exactly. That's that is one of the things I love is that it 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 punishes you, but not like too meanly. I guess is a way to put it. If like you're too it, aggressive, you'll get yourself stuck in a in a little exactly. circle. And it gives you like an opportunity to learn as well. And what I like too is you know being aware of uh, enemy like types and stuff and how mm -hmm. that still factors in really well. Um, like I I remember one of the side quests I had to run in and kill these things. They fucking just decimated me however i assessed them while i was in there so when i went to go do it again i you know redid my materia so i had you know I, it was like ice elemental or something on <laughs> my weapon i just went in and fucking just wiped the floor with them and it was a great feeling to, to, to know that i could actually strategically think out the battle beforehand and then deliver it you know yeah and and that's great they 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 promote that sort of thinking too because yeah. the assess, the whole assess thing, comes with that that new that new character in there, that new mechanic that they've added into this game, that Chadley character. Oh fucking Chadley! That's the <laughs> only goddamn thing they did wrong with this, other than the end, which I won't get into. But god damn it, I fucking hate <laughs> Chadley. God damn it. His his character is awful, but his implementation is really good i think for mechanics wise yeah oh yeah i love like his what his purpose is and what he does i just hate his design and fucking name who the fuck named somebody chadley what Apparently the his fuck parents. <laughs> and then his voice is just oh i want to hit him every time i hear him every time he, he sounds like that super like the 13 year old kid who's already <laughs> attending college exactly and that is one of my least favorite fucking tropes i fucking hate those characters i hate yeah. them yeah because real 13 year old kids who are attending college are usually really nice kids yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> he seems like a nice guy he just has a way about him that i want to hit him you know yeah it's very yeah <laughs> yeah <coughs> yeah oh well so, yeah, yeah. oddly Otherwise, enough Fun fact on that, I actually played the entire game through with English voices. Wow, now there is a revelation for everyone. It was a first, honestly, for me. Usually if there's a Japanese voice option, I will go Japanese voice all the way through. But honestly, um, other than obviously a little bit of disconnect with the English voices matching up with Japanese mannerisms, because obviously the mocap actors were Japanese. <laughs> and you heard like, me complaining about that. <laughs> exactly, we talked about that. And it's, other than that, I honestly think this cast was excellent. Um, my only real complaint would be Red 13's voice is only okay. Um, he brings some of that kind of scholarly sound you might expect, like we talked about, but like, <laughs> I just, he just... <sighs> I'm trying to think of like what kind of character to compare him to. Just like the the smart, like typical smart anime character who's really like like not laid back, but very like calm, cool, collected. And it just I feel like it needs a little more roughness to it. I mean, especially looking at him physically. I mean, between the damaged eye and his fur being very rough, which goddamn, this game is gorgeous and like the mm -hmm. detail in it is incredible. But I don't know, it just seemed odd. But yeah. they could have done a whole hell of a lot worse, so Yeah. <laughs> I mean it, it's it's a hard call because everything with Nanaki's backstory get, yeah. makes a very difficult character to portray, you know. He's yeah. actually a young character in for his, you know a species, for his yeah. species, but he's also a character who's experienced a lot both yeah. in you know, just before even being having to go through everything he went with Shinra. So right. he's experienced a lot, you know, his father, you know, everything growing up with Bugenhagen, you know. Yeah, yeah geez, for sure. He's had a long life, <laughs> both in metaphor literally and metaphorically, while yeah, still being young. So Yep. Exactly. So, and that's that's kind of what I was hoping to see more of that reflected in there, but eh. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's hard to say. I can't say much because I haven't gotten quite too red yet. Um, oh, that's you're that's a good like thirty five hours in. I I totally <laughs> understand why they didn't make him playable. However, there is a save editor out there that makes him playable until like the next cut scene or if you die or something. So oh, I geez. thought that was pretty interesting. That's amusing. <laughs> it's actually um a save editor for Kingdom Hearts three too. Go figure and two and wow. one I think as well. Pretty oh, fun. Uh, it's funny. Built on a similar engine to 3, so it doesn't surprise me. But, yeah. But I will say that I'm also not the biggest fan of Barrett's voice. And Dude. his character in general hasn't been the best. Yeah. Especially uh, early. Early game, for sure. I 100% agreed with you. The first time I, um, actually in the demo, when he's like spouting on and on in the elevator on the way um, mm -hmm. towards the, the reactor... I was like, oh, my fucking God, just shoot me. This is the most, like, horribly stereotypical voice, and he is just fucking being annoying, like, Jeremy level, just going on about shit. Like, shut oh, up, he wasn't dude. Jeremy level, but he was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, honestly, pretty quickly in the game, he came around. Um, As he, like, came around more towards Cloud, I definitely liked him more, and it, the voice really did grow on me. I think it's once he stopped trying to be the great big badass who was leading this whole, you know, thing. It, it's similar to Cloud's story. Is when, once Cloud stops trying to be his version of what sh what what a soldier should be. Yeah, or He's, aka Zach, but yeah, 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 Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler Which is funny for for everyone. Yeah. Jesus, it's a fucking twenty year old game. Like, come on, twenty four years old. Oh my god. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, I remember pet playing it when it first came out. So I remember watching you play it, and then playing it myself, and then playing it again and again for like the next twenty four <laughs> years. So, years. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I'm probably gonna go back and play it again in the next couple of weeks here. So yeah, I have it on Steam. I may just do that. <laughs> oh, that's see, that's probably one of the only platforms I don't have it on right now is Steam. And then the Switch, I think they put it out on too. Did they put it out on the Switch? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was I, considering I, getting on Switch, but I don't really ever do portable anything ever. So I don't have like a need for that ever. So it just seems like kind of pointless, especially since there are no like trophies or achievements or anything. Yeah. But, See, I, mean, I like I had my it on... Switch, but... Yeah, it's a great, great hardware. It's It's got some good software now, but it's just... I don't know. I'm not not a portable guy anymore. So I mean, that was one of the last games I've been playing on on the Switch too. So, oh yeah, what were you playing on the Switch? Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Ooh. Ah, yes, yes. It's funny. So, I actually saw something and um, I can't remember where it was. Somebody posted, "Hey, anybody know anything about this game?" And I instantly thought of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm definitely a big weeb in terms of yeah. the Fire Emblem series. Uh, that's it, cool. It's it's interesting. They've taken a lot of the, the the regular Fire Emblem elements and added on like this whole exploration school exploration mode, which okay. it gets very visual novelly in a lot of ways. Which doesn't surprise me. I mean, that's that's Japan for you. They love the yeah. visual novels. Not that I'm hurt by that. In fact, I, no. I love whenever they do a visual novel game that has more than just the novel part. Like, you know, Danganronpa, um, mm -hmm. and Persona especially. There is a lot of similarities to Danganronpa because it, it, it's, it's you're wandering around this monastery. And it's similar into the, the, the whole halls of everything that you're wandering around in Danganronpa. Oh, and okay. you do a lot of your, you're interacting with the with, the various other characters there, and you you can build up your skills and do think and do all kinds of different things there. Okay, so that that sounds a lot more towards like the Persona stuff too, which is awesome. Yeah, down down. and there's a little bit of similarities with Persona, no. but yep. I mean, that's your whole daily life is you know building up different skills and shit so that you yeah. do better in combat, etc. You know. Yeah, and there's there's um. There's a little bit of an energy gauge, of course, you know, and you oh, can yeah. level that up as time goes on. But 
that's oh, why that's you just cool. spend all your time fishing because fishing is free <laughs> oh fuck yeah dude man it's crazy so many games have that that was one thing i'm honestly surprised was not in final fantasy 7 a fishing mini game because that seems to be like the hot thing in rpgs in the past like five ten years or so like it's yeah it's nuts well, the community, because I, I, I really paid a lot of attention to the Fire Emblem community, the community when this was announced, that whole that whole fishing mini game, everyone was like, "Really? What are we Zelda now?" But like afterwards, it's it's become basically considered part of that main character's persona is that he's big into fishing. No, that's cool. I like you that. Know, it's it's and considered as part of it. Yeah, that's a pretty like odd thing to choose to compare that to is zelda though because i honestly didn't even know there was fishing in zelda first off second off obviously it can't be that big of a part if i didn't realize it uh, <laughs> things that come to mind first would be like uh the original near near automata uh sure final fantasy 15 actually had a decent fishing thing um mm -hmm. fucking animal crossing i mean come on <laughs> Oh, yeah. Animal Crossing lives on his fishing game. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, they've, they've added a lot more in the new game to do. Um, it's, still, it's still a very chill, mellow game, but there's more stuff. Also, fuck, fuck the Easter event. Fuck eggs. God, that was... Oh. <laughs> I cannot... Yeah, oh. I'm not yes. even going to get into it. Not even going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not an Animal Crossing guy, so I just got to let everybody go. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and that's that's the thing with that game is it's very much uh, either you're going to be into it or you're not and it's it, for me it's not a game that well maybe this one I did for a few days play pretty much continuously but like since 7 came out I've been basically playing just that and since I beat that I've maybe gone on Animal Crossing twice or so. And I don't know how much of that is just because at this point, all I can really do is just get more furniture and keep filling out my museum. And like, they really drip feed you the furniture and it's kind of annoying. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of like, eh. Plus, I've got terraforming. So I've pretty much made my island look how I want it to look. Yeah, pretty happy with what I got out of it. I'm still over like 100, 120 hours put into the game. So, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're quarantined and that game comes out fresh, it's yeah. pretty easy to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, you know, it's like the, the, the games I've been playing. I've played quite a bit of Minecraft lately, so, yeah, I guess True. I can understand. <laughs> I was going to get back into it on PS4, end up playing for about 10 minutes and just going, eh, mainly because playing Minecraft with a controller is pretty it's, not great. Yeah. It's it's a lot better than I expected, and it could have been, but eh, I don't know. And on that, I've I've got to buy it again, but I really want to get the Java version so I have more ability to do mods. There's much more support in that. However, yeah. fucking the Microsoft Store, whatever one with their fucking stupid buy buy items and all that. Well, they also have crossplay support, and that's. Yes. That's a big one because I have a friend who plays on iPad, which I don't know how the fuck she does that, but okay. I don't even know. <laughs> but hey, you know what? If you're going to play anything on a mobile device, at least you're playing a game like at the level of Minecraft because anything below that is like, why? why that's not a game. That's a timer for fucking gotcha bullshit. Like, whatever. How dare you? I love my gotcha bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And and see, I like the gotcha thing. It just, when I go to the main screen of a game and it's like 5 billion buttons and ads and buy this and you can get this with our premium currency, I'm like, I'm fucking out, dude. I'm here to play a game, not get fucking sold a bunch of shit I don't need. Like That's true. And that's that's the hard part is they, they're really heavy on monetizing those games which i get because they give them out for free so you gotta make money somehow especially because yep. you're running servers so you gotta have constant money i get that i understand that but i'd rather just pay once and play a game you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like i miss fucking the days of turning on a video game 
fucking busting ass in it and unlocking cool shit and being like, yeah, dude, that took so much work, but I got this cool thing for it. And now it's, it's like, oh yeah, if you want this cool thing, give us another five bucks. What? I, but I just, yep. okay. Um, yep. you know. Yeah. I mean, everything has DLC now. Everything has, has just like day one DLC too, which is. Yeah. Just... Oh. God, and all the fucking individual pre-order things that are just like, ah, just put it in the game, let me unlock it. Like, I have to really give you my money before you can present me the product for you to give me a piece of the game that you've clearly already developed for the game, so why not just put it in the fucking game? <laughs> and it's, I don't have anything against DLC. There's, you know, companies that do it well, which is why I'm really looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077, because... I know they're going to do that well because I didn't like The Witcher, but their DLC was true DLC, something we hadn't true. seen in a while. And uh, Bethesda Blood was and, uh, Blood, Blood and Wine. wine. Yeah, yeah. And I can't remember the other one, but Bethesda used to be really good about it too. Um, Fallout 4, they had a couple good ones, but it wasn't, it wasn't like it was before. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's well, it's game it's a weird one. Hundred. Yeah, I played way too much of that game, though, to be honest. <laughs> oh, good game. Great game. Not amazing, but great. I'd, I'd give it a great. <laughs> a great out of 10. Oh, All right. Day. So what else oh. you got for us? <laughs> so I did, um, actually, just before we, we started this podcast, I did a, a, another little test recording to see if I can actually get voiceover done right and i haven't gone back to check it out yet but i did play one of the free games on epic game store and i highly recommend you get it i don't okay. know if it's gonna be um it's free so awesome but i don't know if it's gonna be online co-op but i know it's at least like um like couch co-op it appears to be um it's called totally reliable delivery service it's fucking wacky i love it i had a lot of fun totally with it reliable delivery service yep yeah it's so it's it's very much in the vein of stuff like um like that uh, what was the goat game fucking goat simulator goat simulator yeah with the really goofy like graphics the kind of really low-end graphics i mean the goofy physics is what i meant to say there but um so you, you know you run around fucking shit up however there is kind of a main point of it where you're you go to these little delivery systems and you pop out a little box and then it says, okay, deliver this to here. And there's a lot of really cool mechanics. Like you can, there's different types of vehicles you can use, but God, the physics are so like goofy as shit. And it, it, it makes for a really fun, funny game kind of thing. And I really can't wait to see how it plays out in like a co-op experience. Cause I, that was one of the things I loved about Goat Simulator is just like, all right, what do we do right now? Oh, let's just play Goat Simulator and just fuck around for like an hour or so, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's such miss. a weird game. <laughs> it is, but I miss Couch Co-op, and I'm glad to see more stuff is like coming out like that. Huh. So um, I guess we can move on to the TV show portion here. All right. I know this is a super your area of expertise but I, there are a couple of things i definitely wanted to talk about sure um for first off of course because we're both trek fans and you mm -hmm. you're right picard is definitely the best fucking captain mm -hmm. oh but the show <laughs> so i'm about <laughs> th three episodes into picard um i went into it knowing it wasn't going to be next generation thank god i went into it knowing that and yet I still find myself just kind of meh about it. I mean, it's very, it's got great characters. It is great intent, like the plot to it. But I just feel like the way they're going about it is so just mediocre and standard. Just, it's not really doing anything new. Mm. I mean, especially for a series that has been known to push boundaries time and time again, it just feels very, very underwhelming. So does it feel like they're just rehashing? What are they exactly doing? Uh, so it's it's a lot of time Picard going around trying to figure out. All right, you you probably not watch this. Guys, if you're listening, this is going to be some spoilers. You can probably cut this out for a good couple minutes. 
um obviously there's no way i can show you that we're not spoilers anymore so good luck so basically the <laughs> premise of this show <laughs> the premise of the show is um you find picard he's at his um winery. his winery yeah yeah the uh chateau and um basically just living out his life just not doing anything more there's this whole big shit that went down where basically some there's a lot of synthetic life forms were made they weren't quite to data's level of course but they ended up going fucking nuts and killing a bunch of people and there's this whole subplot about why that happened but it's kind of like i don't i don't know why i care about that anyway the main point is something happened data died as well so it's kind of like shit all right whatever um and some girl like is sitting in this like apartment with her boyfriend and then suddenly these guys just appear in there and they kill the boyfriend and they're like where are you from and she's just like ah and and then like they're like okay she's not activated yet and then like they put a bag over her head and she just suddenly like kills all of them like fucking just destroys them it's a thing of beauty right sure a little bit of a tam situation yeah exactly it's a great comparison so they get a little further on uh she like when she goes all nuts and stuff she sees picard in her like like visions and like visions of him or whatever and is drawn to picard for whatever reason at that time you don't know so continuing on basically uh she meets up with picard they end up talking some and they're like wow i, I really feel like i know you to, like with each other and you know i feel safe and then she leaves like in the middle of the night i feel and safe i'm gonna leave yeah exactly and then this is the way they expl she explains it is oh i didn't want you to get hurt and it's like well no you came to me so you wouldn't be all right whatever so we're we're back together cool let's do this and um he ends up figuring out she's a synthetic life form and mm -hmm. based on these paintings that data had done he figured out she's a daughter of data in a way right. so I'm like, that's kind of an interesting plot. I, I like where this is going. And so after they figure this out, they're going to leave like a Starfleet base, which, wow, Starfleet is a bunch of assholes now. Anyway, so basically they go to leave and she ends up fighting some more of those guys and dies. And you're just like, w what? Fast subversion. forward, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fast forward some more. Basically, you find out that in order to make these that are actually good enough to compare to data, they have to basically be made in pairs, which feels like a really, really bad cop out. Like mm -hmm. just an excuse to kill one. You'd be like, oh, oh my god, no, and then oh, there's another one. Okay, we're just gonna. Blah, 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 blah. So basically, the plot is him going to find that other one. Three episodes in, this motherfucker has not left the planet yet. We have not gone to space, which they have made out to be a much bigger deal than you would think for being way in the future from the Next Generation series where, like, space travel is just whatever. There's like, oh, space, oh, my God. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. So I'm kind of, like, checked out. I'll probably watch more, but I'm actually enjoying Discovery a lot more. It's actually doing something new and interesting. So what's it awesome. doing as opposed to, like, Enterprise did? Because I know <sighs> you really didn't like Enterprise very much. <sighs> Enterprise just, the main character was just not likable, and I just, I hated his stupid face and just the way <laughs> he talked. And and that's that's one complaint I had with Discovery at first, too, is the captains. It's, it's when Picard is the captain that really, like, hit with you. It's so hard to, like, any other captain sense because... Nobody can stand up to him, and so it just feels so, eh. <clears throat> eh. Well, it's amusing because when Picard, especially in the first couple episodes of Next Generation, he was an asshole. <laughs> and that's, but that's the thing is he was an asshole, but he was a right asshole. <laughs> like, I mean, he was correct, yes. And you can see some of that in the guy in Discovery, some of it, um... But they're very, it's, it feels very back and forth with what they're trying to do with each character in that show. And that may be the only knock I have on it. But they do have some interesting storylines from episode to episode. And it's, it's not quite as episodic as Next Generation was. But it's still definitely more episodic than some of the most other things I've watched. So it's, it's, it's good. 
um especially like the episode with uh rain wilson is mud fucking awesome episode fantastic oh, good to see rain wilson and more stuff he's a great wow. actor he's a fantastic actor and he was the perfect like choice for that role like it oh it was great i couldn't see anyone else hitting that role the way he did that's fantastic but so you're so, just you're holding yeah. out uh really <laughs> To see what uh, what that, uh, Picard's going to be like, you know. Yeah, I mean, I figure maybe once he gets into space, I've heard some comparisons to not quite Firefly, but kind of that that ragtag group of people thing going. So I'm hoping once I get to that part, it really picks up. It's just, ah, oh, it's been a slog getting to that part. I feel like by episode three, they should have already been out there doing that, but yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I've also been watching a fuck ton of Westworld. Absolutely adore that show. Uh, <laughs> the new season, get too much or... it. the new season's fantastic. So first season, awesome. Very. <sighs> they don't really tell you. You don't realize it till like the end that it's a very out of order, like thing the way they're showing it. But like the way it go- they they fucking nailed the execution on that. Um two they make it very obvious it's out of order but it's like it it doesn't feel as well executed as one still pretty good season i've only gotten a little bit into season three so far um fucking love it first episode aaron paul kid cuddy i'm fucking in it bro 100 percent for it god damn that the when kid cuddy popped up on the screen i i let out a shout man i really did that that (laughs) surprised the hell out of me in the most positive way fucking love kid cuddy (laughs) <laughs> kid cuddy is very good i agree yeah. but um i'm enjoying the new scenery um without getting into spoilers again because this is what i do but <laughs> you know they're actually outside in the outside world and it's i was a little worried that it was just going to be like maybe slightly future from now but it's it's definitely much more in the future and it's it's better off for it i think it creates a very interesting world that's good. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what they do with it. And Aaron Paul is top notch as always. I mean, yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I haven't been watching shit, so I <laughs> I can't lie lay into that at all. Yeah, you've never been a big watcher anyway, so it doesn't surprise me. Um, I guess there's only uh one other thing I really want to talk about as far as watching, and mm-hmm. that'd be um a movie by the name of Parasite. Parasite. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, the one by the guy who did the host. Fantastic Korean director. Um, yeah. God, he got how many Oscars for that movie? Like four. Yeah, a whole bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, hundred so. percent earned them. Hundred um, percent. It's this thing that I've been complaining about a lot in Hollywood, especially lately. Uh, yeah. Movies just aren't original anymore. It's rehashes, reboots adaptations i mean look at the fucking marvel universe for you know any <laughs> if you need anything more on that this yeah. is a completely original new story and the way it's presented is just it's fantastic and it it, it kind of keeps you guessing the whole time without like really like feeling like it's holding too much back mm-hmm. or like oh there's a secret it's more like it's just like oh shit i didn't see that coming oh shit and man fantastic the actors are just at the top of their game in this and the shots and everything. I, I was very impressed with that movie. And I definitely say give it a shot if you can get a chance. It was on Hulu. It might still be on there. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you don't watch things a lot, but I would say this is definitely a worthwhile watch for anyone. Yeah. Well, the most recent thing I've watched in terms of movies, I believe, would actually be the Sonic movie. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> So shout out Ben Schwartz, baby! Hell yeah! Yeah, no Ben Schwartz, he did a he did a great job. Honestly, I want to say that that was a better movie than it had any right to be. Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. They they had a lot of interesting characterizations, and they it's very much a family movie. I don't want anybody going in pretending this is like the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you're gonna have oh yeah, you're gonna have no, you know, that's that's Sonic's, what I heard. It's- definitely a kids movie first and foremost with something there for the adults too mostly jim carrey from what i hear 
Jim Carrey, this is probably the best I've seen him since the 90s. Oh, wow. Yeah, like that outside of, like outside of like uh, the Truman Show or something like that, this is, his Dr. Robotnik, I think, has more in common with his character, with uh, him playing the mask than it does any other character he's played. Which is a fantastic character. He's Absolutely wonderful. Leans into his humor as well as anything. Like I, I think, yeah, I think the only other movie I think recently besides uh, Truman Show would be his his portrayal in The Grinch. Uh, oh God, yes, that was fantastic. Those have been his too. best movies since the nineties. So funny thing, I actually heard about that movie recently. So you know, um, uh, Michael or not Michael? Wow, Mike Myers, um, sure. Cat in the Hat movie. Yeah. So that movie is just a plethora of dirty, horrible jokes. I heard apparently those jokes were supposed to originally have been used in the Grinch movie, and everyone on there was like, nah, fucking nah, dude. So, <laughs> Like Jim Carrey has actual comedic time, and I feel bad because Mike Myers is usually better than that, but he oh, also yeah. likes the dirty Humor he always, models. yeah. I mean, I, I just rewatched Austin awesome Powers movies, so yes, he's very much in that. But it was much more tactful than Cat in the Hat was. So that entire movie was designed to be a PG thirteen. The example of what a PG thirteen movie could be was yeah. the Austin Powers movies. Cat in the yeah. Hat is supposed to be Doctor Seuss. <laughs> yeah, but it was basically just just fucking dick jokes the whole time and a lot of like the more i hear and read about stuff that happened around it and how he kind of got fucked by the studio i feel like that was his way of trying to dive bomb his way out of that shit because he was still mm-hmm. kind of contracted to do shit you know yeah but <laughs> but they said that that whole reaction to that movie is why everything that came out afterwards was animated <laughs> like yep. dr seuss's little um the uh, the owners there oh yeah the like state. horton <laughs> here's a hue who and all that yeah and Lorax, yeah yeah so, probably yeah. good move <laughs> definitely smarter than the other than the other way around certainly yeah that ugh, what a nightmare that's always is but yeah no um sonic though it was legitimately funny legitimately interesting it's it has here. Almost nothing to do with the real storyline in so many ways. So, yeah, so like it starts out with him like running around like his world or whatever, right? And then he's like an alien that comes to our planet or something to that effect. It's kind of this weird multiverse slash alien thing. Mm. And okay. I don't know. He constantly yeah. references because the rings are actually like a portal to like another oh. world instead of the way we see them as just collectibles. So the rings play a part. But it's always funny because he keeps referencing that the next planet he'll have to go to is a mushroom world, which I always think is like a weird dig at Mario. So that's funny, yeah. yeah. So, but man, it it was interesting. It was funny, you know. It was cute. So it's good to worth hear. the effort. Worth the effort. I think they did a good job. I'm sure I'll catch it when it's streaming somewhere. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I just. But- you know, after Rise of Skywalker, I just couldn't find <laughs> the need to go to a movie theater for a while oh, there. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't necessarily a bad movie, per se. <sighs> it just, you could feel it was a lot of Abrams catching up with what he had, had planned for the second of the trilogy and trying to fit it all in one. Yeah. You know kind of if if he had didn't have to undo everything rion johnson or whatever the rion whatever his name is did because and i'm not saying he made a bad movie but it just didn't fit with what abrams was setting up and it felt like it just really it was just like ah, now forget all that and then it just the b plot was horrible absolutely horrible the b and the c and the d and the c and the d i just it, it just it didn't engage me at all yeah, I know. and you know it's funny. That's actually the longest of all the movies, all nine of them. Weirdly enough, it feels like the shortest because yeah, nothing really. It, it's nothing weird. happens. Yeah, nothing really <laughs> exactly. happens. At all. Like a lot of those movies, when nothing happens, it like feels like a drag. In this case, just nothing happens quickly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fucking weird. 
It's kind of weird. But you know what? We're done with this this saga here. We can put a fucking cap on it, and we'll oh, see God. what Disney plans on doing. And we always have the Mandalorian, which has been fantastic. Which I can't wait till May fourth. <laughs> May fourth is when we're getting the behind the scenes documentary on how they made it, and I'm Ooh. so excited. Ooh. I love that shit, and it's gonna be like a series from what I was reading, not just mm-hmm. a you know one off. I'm fucking loving that idea. Wow. But we'll see. It's going to be yeah. exciting. <laughs> Fucking Disney Plus. Oh, I just finished, um, uh, was it the Imagineering story on Disney Plus about how they built all the parks and like about the Imagineering team and everything. Really, mm-hmm. really fucking awesome documentary. Really enjoyed it. That. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's me. Well, um, oh. interesting enough, there's actually something similar. So, with this quarantine going on, I'll enter into something that is decidedly not your realm. But Wait, there's sport- a quarantine going on? I know. But oh. entering into something that's decidedly not your realm, sports has been just uh. utterly killed by this quarantine, as we all know. God, God bless. Uh, oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel bad for you guys. Um, you obviously aren't going to run into this issue as much as other people, but... A lot of people now are finding out that they don't have a personality, and that's that's a shame, man. That's a tough thing to come to terms with. Uh, my entire softball team, I think it's every other day, they text me, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Pick up a hobby. Yay. Yeah, Now's the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But <laughs> most of them, their hobby is fishing so or drinking. But oh, nonetheless. Yeah, that, yep, that happens. But what's interesting right now, so as a result, a lot of the sports networks are scrambling. There is right now a huge 10-part documentary going on that uh, was going to be released actually in November, but ESPN decided to release it early. It's called The Last Dance, and it's about Michael Jordan. Oh, wow. So it's a 10-part documentary on Michael Jordan, and... It is huge. Everybody is talking about it in yeah. those circles. So it's been really good. I'm glad so. that you um, uh, said in those circles because this is the first I'm hearing of it. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I always That's cool, remember, though. Like, oh, yeah, you're not going to know. <laughs> you know, I'm not really a sports fan, but I think I will definitely give that a, a, a shot. I'd, I'd be down to yeah. watch that. Yeah, and, and he's the benefit is one of the- Disney. Disney is the same company that does does ESPN. So that's I, true. I got it through my Disney Plus <laughs> subscription. So nice, hell yeah, dude. So that's it's... that's the thing I've been wondering about. Like, what is cable sports channels doing right now? <laughs> is it a lot of just like <sighs> highlight reels or like discussions or? It's it's weird know. because like even just the t- the um the actual pages like the news uh websites and stuff for them yeah it's all about talking about the past you know and and that's the thing in sports circles all we do is constantly debate oh this player could have kicked this player's ass you know but oh yeah yeah i mean look at our video game discussion we just spent you know half the time (laughs) on 20 year old games but yeah it it is what it is because i mean that's that's just the thing you're still anything good like that you're gonna be talking about consuming for a while you know um that's yeah, interesting, it, though. It's similar. It's similar to that with, with, with the sports guy. So it's a lot of that. So that's what this really comes in. Now, outside of uh, the NFL, literally is having their draft right now, but <laughs> it's just, which is a it, huge prime thing normally, and it just is hilarious because there were uh, actually there right now because the NFL draft usually it's all the play all the teams like send people to like one place. That's what they say. They usually get together for that, right? So this is all purely virtual. So everybody is logging in through Teams, Microsoft Teams or whatever. So you get funny instances where you get to see like these coaches, you know, or these GMs who are big personalities into themselves. You can see them in their homes. You know, there's uh, one guy, the GM for the Dallas Cowboys, is a guy named Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. Jerry Jones has millions of dollars because, well, he said owner that's what they do sports yeah sports yeah. i guess yeah, I mean, 
you're talking, you know, billionaire to just even to start. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, every other GM or coach, they're just in their basement or their some side room. No, Jerry uh, took out his $250 million yacht and was broadcasting oh. himself from the yacht. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I want to call him a prick, but I can't say if I had a yacht, I wouldn't do the same thing. I mean, he is a prick, but that's not the point. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, well, obviously. <laughs> you don't get with that rich not being a prick, okay? Exactly. But it, it's also funny because he – because on the other side of that, you have, like, some of the coaches are, like, they're younger. You know, there's a coach that's literally a couple months older than me in the NFL. Oh, jeez. So, you know, that's pretty young, all things considering. But some of the younger ones, like they're in their like basement and their kids are coming in and stuff. There was one guy, all of his kids were like dressed up and like one guy, one of the kids was dressed up in the Frozone outfit. Like, oh, nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And like another one was in some other ass cut here. And the third one was appeared in a mirror. Apparently he was just sitting on a stool. But oh. from the perspective it was at, it actually looked like he was in fact on the toilet. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, <laughs> he was on the toilet. They they yeah. trying to lie to you. Yeah, it's a it's very possible. <laughs> That's probably one of my favorite quarantine things is just the people just being completely mindless about this stuff. Like just mm -hmm. like all right, uh, like I saw a video the other day of a guy is like a a work meeting or whatever, and they all finish up. Guy gets up, starts walking away, and he's just in his boxers, walking around, grabbing some food and stuff. And the the coworkers are like yelling, "Hey, we see you!" Laughing it up. And one of them calls him up, and you actually see him pick up the phone. He's like, "Hey, what's up?" She's like, "Hey, I can see you on the chat. It's still going, and you're in your boxers." And he looks real quick, and he just like throws his phone and fucking disappears into the background. It's great, <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. I love that shit. Yeah, for the, such a weird world we're living in, it's just, it's just it's so yeah. funny when we can get it. That's a lot about adapting, man. And, that, and that's one thing, too. Like, So I went to Best Buy today, as you know, to pick up this sound card so that I could do this tonight. Yep. Um, and it had me thinking a lot because they do the curbside pickup and stuff. And I just thought about how fucking convenient it was that I literally ordered something. Ten minutes later, they're like, hey, come pick this shit up. And I went, <laughs> told them who I was, picked it up, got the fuck out of there. I want to see how much of this, like they've already been kind of implementing this before yeah. all this stuff went down, but I want to mm -hmm. see how much more, like once things start going kind of back to normal ish or whatever, how much that becomes like, like the people have the systems down. Yeah. How that becomes a new normal, because really we're not going to go back to normal. There's always going to be some kind of back and forth with this. It's going to be weird for a while. And yeah. Oh, it's like, just really no convenient. matter what, yeah, no matter what happens on the political or, or, or medical ends, which I'm not going to pretend to be an expert at either, so I'm not going to tell anybody that. But right, no matter what right. happens on those, we know that, you know, the world in general is just going to be different. Very much so. And, you know, we all of us will at this point, both me and you, have lived through the the transition with 9/11. Now Ooh. we get this, you know. <laughs> And this is kind of weirdly different and almost worse than 9 11, you know, because this I mean, has been a two lot more months. people have died, a lot more people <laughs> well, have died too, right? That, that helps, yeah. There's a lot more uh, people who've died, but it's also it's it's affected out. all of us for more like months. directly, yeah, yeah, a lot more directly. We're 9 11, like, unless you had somebody who was in that area, mm -hmm. it really like it, it sucked, it was a big fucking deal, but it didn't really affect you directly like yeah. i mean i've been sitting in my house for a month i've been fucking loving it don't get me wrong but it's <laughs> and it could be worse things but it's just it actually has affected me and it's it's weird to think about you know and i, I was thinking i needed a good month vacation <laughs> yeah but by that same token it's like well i also like being paid so yeah yeah Ooh. So that's the other half of it, because one of the one of the effects from nine eleven we always forget about is the recession kind of came out of that. Yep. So we are pretty sure there's going to be an element of that with this guy too. Oh, yeah. definitely. I mean, and that's the thing is, I you were definitely a little more involved and in, you know aware of the world around you when it happened than I was. I mean, I was in 
elementary school, second grade, I think, when it happened. So on a level, I understood the ramifications, but not not to the depth of like the recession and all that. I didn't really directly feel or see or understand that. Yeah. Where this is much more direct. I gotta say, though, honestly, I am at my financial best right now between my tax return <laughs> and Papa Trump's stimulus. I'm I'm doing pretty Papa good, Trump. man. I'm doing Papa pretty Trump. good. <laughs> I feel guilty because there's a lot of people even with this, like, still struggling and it sucks oh, yeah. and I, f- I feel bad for them, but I'm doing all right at least. Well, that's the hard part for me. It's like, oh, wait, I have been saving for a while, you know, so it didn't hurt me. And then adding the stimulus money was really nice but yeah so you're still you're still working too right yeah that's what i'm saying so i'm still working so which is nice i know i honestly i kind of i kind of miss work i don't know if it's the work ethic in me that's like fuck man but it's really i I have a nice family where i work and that's that's always important so that is important yeah but we all kind of check in on each other here and there just make sure shit's going well (laughs) so yeah Cool. All right. Well, we well, pretty much covered all the topics I wanted to. We hit a little, just barely over that hour mark. So, uh, any other final thoughts for it? Or? Uh, yes. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll give oh, you. Uh, oh, Jeremy sucks. Oh yeah, that piece of shit. Yeah, I, yeah. I seriously, it's been a whole hour since this started, and I warned him an hour <laughs> before this started, <laughs> and then again thirteen minutes before, and then seven minutes before. He just, what, where are you at, boy? God, whatever. Yeah, what a That's fucking okay. tool. Fucking what a Jerry. God, <laughs> what a Jerry. <laughs> oh Jesus. All right then. Cool, man. Well, uh, it's been fun talking to you. Um, like I said, I posted that uh, System Shock video on the YouTube channel. It's the new channel specifically for the kind of stuff I'm going to be pumping out here now that I'm trying to be productive and all that. It's uh, I think it's just called Infinite Sky. I'll I'll send you a link and kind of post the link around with whoever listens to this can find it. Um, pretty sure probably by the end of the night I'll have up the um, Totally Reliable Delivery Service video too. Depending on how the audio came out, because I didn't really level anything, and I haven't really looked at it yet. So we'll see how that worked out. Yep. So, yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, hopefully we can make this like at least a weekly thing, and if we come up with more topics sooner, I'm down to do it whenever kind of thing. Sounds like a plan. So right, whenever man. you can is whenever you can, and we'll be there. That's it, man. All right, brother, you have a good night. And anyone listening, stay strong, live strong, et cetera. I don't know. I don't know how to sign off of these things. Yeah, you just say bye. Bye.